At the cellular level, damage to our DNA is a major cause of aging. But what factors can slow down or even reverse the damage? We meet a researcher in Denmark in search of an anti-aging antidote. My name is Måns Geibig Knudsen. I'm an associate professor at the University of Copenhagen. I study the molecular basis of aging and why we get old with the idea of developing interventions so that we can live healthier for a little bit longer. My interest in aging research started actually probably when I was a teenager, uh, seeing my grandparents uh, get old and get sick. Uh, and I was wondering why, why that had to happen. I got into medical school to some extent because I wanted to study aging. Molecular aging is uh, understanding the molecular basis for why we get old. So what happens when we age? A lot of different things happen as we age. We accumulate damage to our DNA. Um, our proteins uh, oxidize and rust. We also lose the ability to maintain our stem cells. Our stem cells are cells we have in our tissues that can divide and make new tissue, uh, and we lose the ability to regenerate our tissues with age. So many things actually happen as we age. When we get damage in our DNA, a lot of enzymes get activated. So they get activated to try to repair uh, the DNA damage. So we have hundreds of, of enzymes that are little workers that check that our DNA is okay. And we can see with age that these workers swarm to certain parts of the DNA. So they accumulate there, there's like an alarm bell that's saying, hey, we have damage here. And they all come there. But what that damage actually is, we don't, we don't exactly know. The types of uh, DNA damage that we study, where you get an activation of DNA damage response, can lead to something called cellular senescence. Cellular senescence is uh, a phenomenon where cells lose their function and begin secreting inflammatory cytokines. So I usually compare them to like angry old men that lose their purpose. They just sit there and then they spew out inflammatory remarks. That's actually how the senescent cells also work in our tissue. So they sit there, make the microenvironment around them kind of bad. We have um, developed some compounds that may work on, on the DNA damage response. These are uh, compounds that appear to allow these angry old men to become a little bit younger again and start working again. We are using our knowledge of these basic mechanisms to de design trials. One is actually in people that used to smoke. The smoke has caused damage to the lungs and have developed COPD, so this chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. There's actually some promising results where NR appears to reduce the inflammation that these patients have in their lungs. And this is very important because the inflammatory response is involved in driving the disease state. So we think that, that this could be a new treatment. Another trial we're running is actually on healthy elderly, where we are testing uh, fasting. We looked at a large number of different um, parameters, also like physiological things, body composition data. So this was actually quite striking. I, I thought that, that we would see a huge effect in the exercise group, but it was actually the fasting group where we see the largest effect. My name is Nils Kamp and I'm from a farm outside of Copenhagen. I'm 68 years old and I have retired from the army. I like the change of the seasons. And I think it gives a rhythm to the years. In the summertime, you enjoy the summer, but you also know summer is going to be followed by the autumn. 
I'm not that Danish that I'm fond of winters, but I accept them as a, a part of uh, life. Um, spring, of course, is, is a promise. I exercise approximately four times a week and I go swimming and I go cycling. I like walking and hiking. I have noticed by myself, I was a bit overweight and I continued to do the fasting after the conclusion of, of the trial. So I've been fasting for almost 10 months and during that I've, I've lost approximately 17 kilos. Doing fasting has really empowered me. It had cut off half an hour of uh, sleep. So it gives me more energy. I'm not as much dependent on food anymore. In this dark woods, it's not that likely that we'll be able to photograph any birds. But I'm looking for other motives. I'm looking for a leaf or flower in the sunshine with the dark wood around it. it it's sort of a homage to uh, life. Simple motives are best. I grew up swimming and bathing in the lakes in the central Jutland. That has become a part of my character to swim, being confident in water. It's not a religious or a spiritual thing. It's a place I belong. We have to uh, use our body. We have forgot our body. Many people in the Western world, they don't realize that they uh, are a body or have a body. And if you forget that, you will easily get into trouble. We're not built to sit in a car. We're not built to eat all the time, right? We're built to be in a, in a world that's harsh, that doesn't allow us to eat three times a day. This is what we are optimized for evolutionarily. We are also optimized for only spending energy when it's required. We're built for a harsh environment. And if the harsh environment is not there, then we, we typically become lazy and then we become sick. We know there are behavioral changes you can do that can influence your aging. Some of that is, for example, sleeping well at night is very important. Exercise appears to be quite important. There's also actually something like uh, drinking black coffee that actually seems to be uh, quite healthy. Uh, dark chocolate seems to be healthy. Then these uh, dietary things where you can do fasting. But there are other things also like having a, a great uh, community around you, so having strong social connections appears to, to be good for your longevity, um, but also having a purpose. And these two things are, I think, a little bit linked. My name is Janne Jönsson Larsen. I am 66 years old and I live in uh, Copenhagen in Denmark. I have a very active uh, life. Every morning at six o'clock, I swim in the, the ocean the whole year. And I love it. It uh, makes my, my body feel young and happy. <laughs> mm. I don't like to swim alone. I have to be with my friends. In the summertime, I swim uh, about five minutes, maybe. But in the winter, when it's only one degree, <laughs> I don't swim. I just go down and 
say hello to the ice and they go up again. <laughs> We are now in uh, in summer gospel camp. I'm here every year. I've been here the last 14 years because I love to sing. It brings me a lot of uh, joy and a lot of hope singing gospel. And uh, we have a, a lovely community together. Forever and ever. Amen. Lige præcis. Take me to the water. Take me to the live streaming water. Take me to be baptized in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. I think uh, summer gospel camp uh, helped me because I both have the singing and I also have relationships with other people. It's very important for me to and, and to everybody in my age to have people they can talk to so they don't feel alone. myself a happy person with singing and swimming and doing yoga and have all these friends. I'm very thankful. In the next 10 years, we have clinical trials showing that we're actually impacting aging, particular diseases as we get old. And I think this is a very important first step because this will also allow Big Pharma to become more interested in this. And we unfortunately need these big pharmaceutical companies to run some of these trials. In the next 10 years, we should see some of these trials hopefully being successful and that could have a really large effect on our healthcare system and society as a whole.